to Pominville. Pominville into Ottawa territory. Pominville goes around Alfredson, cuts him, but scores! Jason Pominville, shorthanded. Oh, now do you believe? Now do you believe? These guys are good, scary good, and they are going to either Carolina or New Jersey. The Buffalo Sabres knock off the Senators in all. Another of the great calls by Rick Jenneret. And anyone who was following the team at that time knows exactly where they were when they heard that call. And we just saw video evidence of where this man was in that moment, and that was celebrating behind the bench. He is Lindy Ruff, who is the current coach of the Devils. But if you didn't know, the Sabres have played more than 4,000 games in franchise history, and this guest has been a part of almost half of them as a player or a coach. Lindy, thank you for joining us today as we reflect and remember Rick Jenneret. No, you're, you're welcome. Uh, you know, just thinking of Rick, I, obviously this morning, the, one of the first memories, it's crazy you played that video, but that it was one of the first memories I thought of, and I, I can remember the end of that call being to the the population of Palmonville is going up or whatever the the end of that call was but um he just had an incredible knack for 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 nailing any call any goal any win um an, an incredible voice of the game Lindy, you probably don't know that, but my ringtone on my cell phone was the Mayday call for a long time. And at Christmas, it would change for the La 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 Fontaine. <laughs> and we were actually in Ottawa in that playoff series during a team meeting. And my phone started to ring in my pocket. And it's like, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm hiding it. I'm trying to cover it so you don't hear it so I don't get in trouble. Because it was a rig generate call, would I have gotten in trouble if you had heard my phone ringing? Marty, you were always in trouble. <laughs> That's <laughs> and Marty, true too. And, and Marty, your phone was always ringing, so <laughs> you were you would have been constantly in trouble. But no, I don't think so. I mean, looking back on on you know Rick and uh, you know how he's touched so many people from players to coaches to fans, uh, just to his friends. Uh, incredible human being. What was it like as a kid, as a player, getting to know him, and then how was that relationship? Uh, in any way different if it was as you became coach and all the years you spent behind the bench? Well, I can tell you one thing, you, you know, as a player, uh, you, you don't, I don't think you'd get to experience and experience it as much as a coach because we're watching video, we're watching the game and often coaches turn the volume down uh, or turn the volume off uh, when they're, when they're watching a game. I always turn mine up. Because I, I loved listening to Rick. I loved listening to the calls. Uh, I loved his description of the game. I mean, the goals were incredible. Uh, you know, I would listen to some of the goals two or three times. And sometimes the coaches, would, we'd all listen to, to them together. So uh, if the experience as a coach was so much greater than uh, that as a player. What was he like on the plane? Because he sat up front with the coaches, right? So for all these trips, like after games, you would sit down and you'd be angry about a loss or you'd be happy about a win. And RJ would just be sitting there. Like, what was he like on the plane and getting to talk to him after games or traveling to California for five hours and guys playing cards and all of that? You know, I think when you, when you remember Rick, he was, he was stable. You know, he was, there wasn't, uh, he didn't get emotionally you know, involved in the, you know, how coaches do with wins and losses and slamming the computer and throwing stuff around and complaining about everything. Rick was kind of the voice of reason up there. And if, if you wanted somebody to talk to, you, you know, you talk to Rick and Rick always had something good to say about the game and we might've lost, but he could bring up uh, some of the great points of the game. And, and, and often you started to feel, pretty good about the game and then even there was times you thought you know maybe we should have won the game uh, uh just rick's viewpoint a lot of times was uh, a sense of reason that's amazing what what could you share about rj uh that that many people wouldn't know oh boy uh i i don't know if there's anything i, I think everybody almost knows everything about him um 
it, just such an incredible uh, person, kind, um, diligent on his job. I, I mean, obviously, uh, RJ knew the game incredible. Uh, he knew it even in these later years was still so sharp with calling the game uh, and how he called it. And uh, so I don't believe there's anything I have that people haven't experienced or, or know about Rick that, that I know, uh, because I think he shared everything with everybody. When you would go on the road and you would see, or even at home when other teams would come in, I was always impressed and shocked at how many people wanted to go see Rick Generous, the other team's broadcaster, the other team's uh, newspaper reporter, the other team's coaches wanted to go and say hi to RJ. Did you find that a little bit like, hey, I'm here too. Like, you guys want to talk to me? Like, I'm the coach. Like, they all want to gather around RJ. Was that something that stood out? You know, I think he just, he was such a likable guy, Marty, that... Yeah. Uh, Everybody liked, everybody knows one or two of Rick's calls. I mean, you've probably laid out a couple of the most famous. The May Day probably might be the most famous uh, call. And then the la la la. And, the, you know, he would do that long drawn off Stu Barnes call. And, you know, you just get, you know, top shelf for Mama Hides. I mean, there's just a list of calls. And I think if you asked a coach around the league, I, I think they've almost heard all of Rick's calls. And I think they appreciate. Uh, the value he put, you know, he put behind those calls and, and, and the thought and, and how timely some of those calls, some of those calls were. And I think that, you know, he's one of few guys that, that added a lot to the game just by the way he called the game. Uh, he did an incredible job with that. Are there any calls of your goals that are special to you? <laughs> that would be, Oh my God, he scored. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what? Um, I don't know. I, I think Rick was calling the game when, um, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm going back a lot of years now, probably to like 80, 85, 86, when I had the four goal game against Quebec. Uh, I'm not sure if Rick called that game or not. Um, but there was often a long time in between goals when Rick was calling goals that I scored. So, uh, uh, no, there was, I, I don't think it was, uh, uh anything that really stands out but uh you know the call i i, I think the, the ones we've mentioned are the ones that are so special mm -hmm. and you yeah. mentioned and you mentioned Stu barnes he's coming up uh next yeah. on the show here so that was a, a per see western boys stick together you promote one another <laughs> <laughs> I would well, never I, do that. I would never stick to all the Quebec guys. That's not what I would do, right? I, not on the air anyway. Uh, when uh, I talked about how when we had the brawl with Ottawa, and if you listen to RJ's call, it looks like I'm in a, a really close fight with Ray Emery. And if you listen to the Ottawa call, it looks like I'm getting beaten to shred. Um, I think of your, like, with Billy Smith, right, going back at him and how excitable, like, RJ must have been in that moment. Did you guys talk about it, like, on the bench? Because I know we did as players. We talked about, oh, that must have been a great call by RJ. But did you guys talk about it in the locker room or on the bench? Uh, you know what? I, I don't believe we did. Um when you when you think about that whole Ottawa situation and, and the heat of the moment and and you just I mean you just kind of played off the the heels of what I mentioned about sitting on the airplane with RJ and you know when you lose a game and by the time you're done you you thought maybe we should if you're talking to him you thought you maybe should have won the game because he brought up a lot of positives and and his spin on it was a pretty good fight you had with a Amory and and the other spin on it was Probably a little bit more accurate, Marty, as I remember. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, you know, I think Andrew had to come to your rescue at the end. Uh, but RJ had a had a great way of, I wouldn't say favoring the home team, but he, he always could put it where the, the home player or his team, you know, had a shot or it was a good shot or there was something positive. Um, and I think maybe that what uh, he brought up was positive in that fight you had was that, uh, the fact you didn't, uh, you actually didn't get demolished. You you hung in there. <laughs> I laid down quickly. That's why. You couldn't beat me if I was laying on the ice. But, uh, um, you know, I think, and, and, and the urban legend that he was, I know my kid dressed up as RJ for Halloween. Like, it, there's no other broadcaster on the, the National Hockey League that would be a Halloween costume for somebody or that 
people would, Howard Simon put out a tweet saying, raise your hand if you played street hockey and you would shoot the ball and, and make an RJ famous call, right? I mean, there's, there's, you've been around the league, you as a player and a coach, uh, there's nobody that, that has that status as a broadcaster anywhere. No, you know, and I think it's, it, I think what Howard Simon just said is, is so true. He's touched, uh, he's touched so many people and some of those calls will, they'll be there 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. um, e even I can just reference this year, you know, when a shot goes top corner, you, you automatically you think, you know, top corner, uh, top corner where, where mama hides the cookies. And uh, so street hockey, whether you're street hockey, basement hockey, um, if you're around Buffalo and you've listened to RJ and you've listened to his calls, you're trying to imitate a lot of his calls. And and the one thing I, I think people cannot do is, is replicate what he did. I mean, our calls of what RJ was thinking are good. His calls were incredible. Last one, Lindy. Um, and I know you were asked about RJ in advance of his night where his banner went up. But from afar, did you have a chance to witness much of that ceremony either after the fact? And and just, I'm just curious what that night meant for you, given how many games you have spent with this organization and how you felt when you saw that RJ banner go up. Yeah. What, what a, you know, I, I watched it, uh, the post post ceremony and, uh, what an incredible night. I don't know if there's a, you know, another guy that will ever be in an organization that can touch as many people, as many players, as many fans, uh, coaches. And and when I'm talking fans, I'm not just talking Sabre fans, but I'm, I'm talking just hockey fans that uh, he's been able to touch uh, from other teams to other countries. Uh, I think that uh, RJ was an incredible gift to the game. Wow. I don't think you can put it more succinctly than that. Lindy, thank you. It's always great to see you. And um, and I know even in this toughest moment for for Buffalo right now, um, people find great comfort in hearing your voice and your words about the great Rick Jenneret. Thank you. Well, I love being on with you guys. Thanks for having me.